John Wilhoyt, and this is part two in our series, The 25 Biggest Mistakes That Real Estate Investors Make. We covered in part one, uh, items one through five, and this is part two, where we'll be covering the next five points. Point number six is having no team in place. And a lot of people try to go it alone, or they have just one particular partner. It may be a financial partner, it may be an equity partner, but you really have to have a team. And that team includes all of the service providers necessary to not only buy the asset, but then also to run the asset. So in, with respect to team, what I'm referring to is not only just your broker for looking for properties, but also someone that can do the market research to make sure that it's a quality market. It's in a location that you'll want to own for an ex extended period of time. You'll also need an attorney. You'll also need a banker or a mortgage banker. And then that's just all before acquisition. And then post acquisition, you'll need vendors and suppliers if, you're, if you are running the property yourself, or you'll need a property management company, preferably a professional property management company. And all of those things relate to team. So one of the biggest mistakes that real estate investors make is not having the pre and post acquisition team in place even before they buy. Item number seven is not being prepared to operate the business on day one. So those things we talked about related to post acquisition, all of those people, vendors and suppliers and or property management, they really need to be on your team ready to go out the very first day that the property is in operation. So it doesn't do anyone any good to close the deal and then go look for professionals because what if that search takes one week, three weeks, six weeks because of the process that's necessary to interview property management companies, to make sure it's the right people and the right person that's going to be in, engaged with your account. So waiting until the day of closing to try to determine who's going to run the asset really is too late. So that's some of, one of the things that people do that are not in the business full time. They just think, well, the property will be okay until such time as we can find someone. But you really need to find that someone or that company prior to closing. Number eight is really not managing the manager. And that's a part of being a passive or a, an active investor. Either way, there needs to be someone that's on point from your team that can manage the manager. Uh, presuming that you have professional property management because it doesn't do you any good as an active or a passive investor for the reports to come in your mailbox and they just go into a file. So that way there's no accountability. So there needs to be a person that is in charge of that and at the institutional level that's accomplished by asset managers which that's the field I come from. As an asset manager it was my role to act on behalf of owners with respect to the equity that they invested in properties and interact with the property management company. So regardless of scale, someone needs to be in that position to be able to manage the manager or at least the, another way of saying it is to engage with the manager, to ask questions, to make sure that not, that necessarily, not necessarily that they're doing their job, but to make sure that they're doing their job and to make sure that they are everything that they're accomplishing is in the best interest of ownership. Item number nine is not knowing valuations. So biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes that real estate investors make is presuming that they know valuations of assets versus knowing them. So that takes work, right? I mean, you have to really get into the marketplace. You have to not just know what the property on this side and this side is doing. You have to know what the market is doing. So when I say market, I'm really talking about sub-market and the sub-market encompasses all of the properties that your property is competing against. So if it's a competitive asset, then it's imperative that you have a good feel, a good foundation for the valuation of those assets. Because your asset is competing directly against those, the valuations are very likely similar. However, you need to know what those are. You can't just guess. It's no different with rents, right? If properties are renting for $1,200 a month, you can't presume that that's the market rent. It really takes more research to validate that $1,200 is the number. Item number 10, uh, as the 10th mistake in my list of the biggest mistakes that real estate investors make, is not being willing to pay professionals. And I'm not suggesting that every single last thing needs to be uh, ferreted out to a third party, but if you're acting as your own property manager, 
in this country, in the United States, you're competing against 1.1 million people that are in the business full time. So recognizing that those are your competitors, maybe in many instances, you're better off hiring someone that is a full time professional versus uh, engaging in property management yourself because it really is a 24 hour business. It's not one that you can take, uh, take off from on the weekends nor at your convenience. Property management requires uh, diligence. It requires professionalism. The people on property are your customers. Your residents are your customers. And professional property managers are engaged in that business on a full-time basis and they know how to interact with the, that client base. But in addition, they also know how to obtain new clients. So as a part-timer, it's hard to do all the things that are necessary in property management, which includes evictions, which includes renewals, which includes leasing. It's not just sending someone out when there's a pipe that's broken or just picking up the phone when someone decides to call you. You really need to engage with people to get them to come to your property to see if it's a place where they may wish to reside. So property management is, uh, and professional property management, I think, is a stalwart within the industry. And no matter the scale of your business, I think you would benefit from hiring professional property managers. My name is John Wellhoyt. This is part two of the biggest mistakes real estate investors make.